Hello everyone. I'm so excited to bring God's word for you all today. You now today I just want to encourage you with this thought that our God is a God of possibilities. All possibilities. If you are listening to this facing an impossible situation, you have come to a place where you are thinking it is over. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. I don't know who is going to help me. I want you to say this to you. We serve a God who is a God of all possibilities. What is impossible with man is possible with him. You are believing in a God. You are expecting from a God. You are trusting in a God who is a God of all possibilities. He can make a way for you where there seems to be no way. He can bring healing to you. Healing to your body when the doctors would have given up on you. He can set you up in places from where you can prosper. He can take you to be there at the right place at the right time meeting with the right person. So you can enjoy good things happening to you that is who our god is don't give up keep on trusting in him keep on expecting from him never let your spirit go down never let that passion in you go down just keep persevering keep pursuing keep believing keep trusting you will definitely see the light of day amen is a good god he will do good for you let's get into the word i want to talk from the letter which paul wrote to titus let me read titus chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 paul a servant of god and an apostle of jesus christ to further the faith of god's elect and their knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness When Paul is writing to Titus is writing I'm an apostle you know why I'm an apostle I'm an apostle to further that means to increase to bring to light the faith and their knowledge is talking about faith and knowledge you know he wants you to have faith and also have the knowledge about the faith you know every christian life starts in faith you now we read in romans like this with our heart we believe and we confess with our mouth what we believe you see a connection a faith without knowledge it's not effective it's not powerful but when you have that faith and you have the knowledge of what you are believing that becomes powerful you know for example communion when we participate in the communion or when we take communion our faith is this that jesus died for us that's the faith with which we are participating in the communion we are eating of his flesh and drinking of his blood but if it stops there it is of no effect it is of no good you know why it's not just enough to have faith we need to have a knowledge of what we are believing so when i participate in the communion i know that jesus died for me but i also need to know why he died for me He died for me on the cross of Calvary to set me free to heal me to deliver me to prosper me to set me free from curse sickness I'm no more a slave but a son so this knowledge empowers my faith it makes my faith effective an effective faith is this which is combined with the knowledge of what i am believing so when paul is writing 
he is not just furthering the faith he is not just administering faith he is also giving them the knowledge about that faith which is working in them let me read a passage of scripture for you you know in romans paul is writing about salvation he is talking about his ministry and then he is saying i want to bring your bring your attention to the children of israel he's saying you know let me read that romans chapter 10 in verse 2 you know it's talking about the israelites i can testify about them that they are zealous for god he's saying they are zealous for god they are passionate about god they believe in him they know that is a mighty god they they are working hard you know there's a fire burning inside of them about god but then the next part says but their zeal is not based on knowledge they are zealous but there is no knowledge about their zeal so if i can put this into perspective again you know faith without knowledge they they were zealous but without knowledge you ask them why are you doing this moses said it you ask them why are you doing it because that is a norm in our house you ask the children why are you doing this my father demands it from me they didn't have a knowledge of why they should do it why do you observe the passover because moses commanded us to observe the passover but where is the knowledge you're supposed to think about what happened so you can experience the same thing in your day to day life why are you sacrificing no the law commands us to sacrifice we are supposed to sacrifice so what is the implication of the sacrifice we don't know that's the condition in which they lived that's how they lived so i'm encouraging you believe with the knowledge of what will happen to you because of that faith amen you know when uh, peter is writing to to the church is writing like this uh second peter chapter 1 verse 3 verse 2 it says like this grace and peace be yours in the abundance through the knowledge of god and of jesus our lord he's saying grace and peace be yours in abundance may grace abound to you may peace abound to you may you have more of god's grace more of peace how through the knowledge of god and of jesus our lord we know who jesus is we believe jesus we believe in the father we believe in the father's love we believe in the father's sacrifice we believe jesus but he's saying what you believe god as that is what you will experience if you're if you're going to look at god as a god of peace you know the knowledge we know there is a god above you believe in a god above but what is the knowledge about that god that matters if you are going to think of god like this he is a punishing god can i tell you something you will experience only punishment if you're going to you know think of god like this that he is a god who is taking away he is going to take away you are going to miss out he won't take away you're opening the doors for things to be taken away from you the way you look at god is the way you will experience him that means the knowledge is the lens through which you look at god you know there is a god above but what do you think of him what is the knowledge that you have of him So when Peter was writing he's saying grace and peace be yours in abundance he's saying if you're going to look at him as a god of peace 
God of grace and he is writing it will be in abundance in you if you are going to look at him as a God of prosperity he will you will experience prosperity God of health you will experience health God of deliverance you will experience deliverance God who will set you up you will experience God setting you up we believe that there is a God and what we think of him is what we will experience amen think good things about our God don't look at your circumstances and define god let the holy spirit minister to you let the spirit of god minister to you about his true nature about his goodness about his love for you about his grace towards you about his mercies you know when david is writing he is saying you know it is god who teaches my hand to war see he look at him as a trainer as a personal trainer he looked at him as a shepherd who will not allow him to be in want we read about david he had so much wealth he had big victories there was not a single battle he lost because he looked at god as a one who teaches him to war he looked at god as his provider as his protector he said god will prepare a table for me before my enemies there was not a single battle he lost you know david was the most pursued person saul is pursuing him he went into so many battles he was in siklag absalom you know so many tight situations no so many uncertain times so many difficult times But you know what David is writing? He's writing surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. He was not writing about who was doing what against him. He looked at God. He knew there is a God above and the way he looked at God is this. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. He's saying God will make goodness and mercy follow me he died in his old age but till his death he lived a victorious life the bible writes there was no king like him before or after the way you look at god is how you will experience him that's why peter when he's finishing the epistle is writing like this grow in the grace and the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ grow in the grace and in the knowledge allow the holy spirit to reveal the true nature don't allow the circumstances don't allow anyone telling you bad things about your father will you keep quiet if somebody says bad things about your father no we will be so mad we'll be standing up in arms wanting to fight them so am i telling you if anyone blasphemes about your father tell them shut up and get out don't allow them to you know defile the knowledge of who your god is have big thoughts good thoughts about your father in the in the sermon on the mount he we read like this look at the birds of the air they don't sow they don't reap they don't save but still the heavenly father feeds them look at the lily of the valley they are clothed in royalty which is much greater than solomon in all his royal robes in all his glory if the father could clothe them how much more will he not clothe for you you know he's a good god he's a good father he's a restoring father he's a father whose heart is to regenerate to rebirth to regive that is who he is and he will do it for you 
No, the knowledge. We know there is a God above. But what you know about Him is what matters. We believe that there is a God above. But what is the knowledge of Him? It matters. You know, in Proverbs, we read like this. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 10 and 11 let me read this for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul when knowledge of who God is occupies the major part of your heart if that's what is bringing happiness you know, knowledge when it becomes pleasant to your soul so when you see your situation the situation, the magnitude of the situation, the gravity of the situation, when you don't let them affect you, but the knowledge of who your God affects you. Let me read what happens. Discretion will protect you. Understanding will guard you. You know, discretion means good thoughts, stable thoughts, quality thoughts. That's what discretion Right decision. You will be able to make the right decision. That's what discretion is. Good thoughts leading to right decision. You won't be confused. You won't be double-minded. You won't be shaken. You won't make decision out of fear. Discretion means a stable, a constant, consistent, confident decision. That's what discretion is all about. The knowledge of Him. When it becomes the majority in your heart oh man I'm telling you you'll be able to make right decisions faith that there is a God above and the knowledge of who your God is faith that you have an intercessor he is Jesus but what he is doing what he is interceding for you the knowledge of Faith that the blood of Jesus, faith on the blood of Jesus. But what is the blood doing for you? Faith in the wounds of Jesus. But what those wounds are accomplishing for you? Faith on the Holy Spirit that is poured out on you. But what is that accomplishing for you? The empowerment of the Holy Spirit accomplishing for you. Faith that you are righteous. Now the knowledge of being righteous empowers you. Faith that you are sanctified and the knowledge of what it means to be sanctified it empowers you. Faith and knowledge. You will be discreet. You will be able to make the right decisions good decisions let me show some examples from the bible you know what lack of knowledge does and knowledge does you know jesus told the disciples get into the boat let's go to the other side so they all got into the boat after a tiring day and jesus gets into a corner he's sleeping these guys were rowing talking about you know what jesus was doing and talking good things about jesus and jesus was sleeping Suddenly, we read that there is a nasty storm that overwhelms them, catches them by surprise. The boat is rocked all over the place. You know, they all are trying to save themselves. They are rowing. Suddenly, they see that Jesus is missing. They find him sleeping. They go to him. They wake him up. You know, what's the first thing they said? Don't you care that we are dying? Who are they talking to? They saw him changing water into wine. They saw him making the lame walk, the deaf speak, the dumb hear, the blind see, the demon possessed, delivered, the dead coming back to life. They saw him doing all of that. And what are they saying? Jesus, don't you care that we are dying? The right thing they should have said is this. Jesus, get up. 
is a big storm take care of it they didn't say that don't take care that we are dying they are so scared they were filled with the fear of death why they didn't know the resurrection is there they didn't know that the one who is sleeping in the boat is a source of life they didn't know the one who is in the boat is word who became flesh but it was lack of knowledge on their side can i tell you something you and i know who he is we have the epistles written we have the gospels written we have the prophecies about jesus read them meditate on them so you can have the knowledge of who jesus is who is with you just like paul said greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world i know and i know and i know that is able to do what i have given into his hand the knowledge is a life giver is a eternal life is a source of life is a flesh word who became flesh for you and me is a sin offering he's the one who came to do away with the sins of the world he is your righteousness he is your wisdom he is your sanctification he is your perfect he is interceding at the right hand of the father for you and me his blood speaks good things and better things for us amen but on the contrary we read about this lady with the issue of blood for 12 years for 12 years she spent all her money trying to become well find a solution for the problem in her body trying to be healed of that sickness but no use then she hears about jesus that's what we read she hears about jesus and the next minute she gets up she goes in through the crowd and she touches the hem of his garment she heard about him and there's a faith that was activated and let me tell you the knowledge with which she made that faith effective because we read in the bible it says she heard about jesus she rose up she went through the crowd touched the hem of his garment because she thought in her mind that if i touch at least the hem of his garment i will be healed today i'm telling you you may have faith but the knowledge is what makes it effective what you are looking as is what you will experience in them to be she said i'm going to touch the hem of his garment and i will be healed we read immediately immediately it didn't take days it didn't take months it didn't take years the struggle of 12 years i am telling you i'm prophesying you today it will happen like that what you were waiting for years to happen you know who my god is he can make it happen at the blink of an eye overnight matter of minutes matter of seconds that's how my father works the knowledge of him she wanted to be healed because that's the knowledge she had about him and she was healed immediately what do you're speaking about god within yourself it matters You know when David was standing before Goliath Goliath is you know teasing him what have you come to me as if you are going to fight a dog because Goliath is a strong man 
with a big sword javelin big armor you know shield everything but david is just going in with a rod with a staff in his hand with a belt with five stones and a pouch to hold those stones he's going in there and goliath is teasing him what is this you know, sometimes the situation, the challenges you face might be greater than your strength, than your ability. Don't look at it and disqualify yourself. Let, let's, let, me see, let me tell you what David did. In verse 45 we read like this. I am coming to you in the name of the God of the armies of Israel. You know, Saul was there. They knew there was a God. They had faith that there is a God above. But the knowledge, the lack of knowledge of what their God can do made them run and hide. Every time Goliath came to speak, but David he had faith in his God and he knew what his God can do. He said, today my God will give you into my hands and I will kill you and make you a feast to the fowls of the air. And the people around will know that there is a God who is a God of the armies of Israel. See, the knowledge that knowledge, I'm challenging you. The knowledge. Don't let the situation demean the power that is there in you. You know, when Paul is writing, he's writing like this. The message of the cross is foolishness for the people of this world. But for you and me, it is a power. The knowledge of who your God is will make you expect the impossible. It will not make sense. It will not add up. You won't even know how this will work out. Don't worry. Your God can, God will. He will. All you need to do know is my God can do it. My God will do it. That's it. The knowledge. You don't worry how five will be enough for the five thousand. That's God's. Just believe that God can do it. Don't worry about how the waters will turn into wine. God can change anything and He will do it. Abraham did it. Isaac did it. David did it. They lived the life of a champion because of the knowledge of who their God is. Today I'm challenging you. It's not just enough to know. It's not just enough to believe that there is a God. You need to get to a place of knowing what that God in whom you believe can do for you. Apply that knowledge to your situation and make that faith an effective faith. Abraham knew that his body is dead. Sarah's womb is dead. But he was not weakened in his faith by the knowledge of the deadness of his body or Sarah's womb. But his mind was persuaded to know that God can give life to the deadness of his body and the deadness of Sarah's womb and make her conceive even though it doesn't happen for any other man but he thought himself as an exception and he enjoyed giving birth when people said it can't happen I'm telling you When people discredit you, when people disqualify you, 
you don't have to accept it god can and god will can we just close our eyes a oh, gracious heavenly father we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us to come and listen to what you have in store for us father i have spoken about you saying that you can and you will today i pray holy spirit you will minister to them you will open the eyes of their heart to know what you can do for them what you will do for them take every limiting thoughts every limiting beliefs so they can know who you are what you are i bless them lord i bless this week i pray they will be encouraged in their spirit let this word burn within them and encourage them and strengthen them and comfort them and empower them. let it be like a seed that fell on a good good ground and gives hundredfold fruit i pray your peace which passes all understanding to guard their hearts and mind wherever they go let your angels go with them let your blood cover them you be a wall of fire round about them what the world fears let it not affect them we are under your protection we are under the shadow of the almighty a thousand may fall at our side at 10000 at our right hand but it will not come near us that's what we believe and that's what we acknowledge that this world produce good fruits i bless them in jesus name amen 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 god bless you you will do well